Looking for me to let's go Take me on this journey home I don't wanna wait no Hey, 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 y'all. It's your girl, Erica Vane, back again with another amazing All-American video. And in this video, we are breaking down episode 17, the All-American Homecoming pilot episode that premiered last night. Y'all know I'm hyped. Let's get into it. Oh, grab a snack because we got some things to talk about, honey. We are ATL shoddy for Homecoming. Last night's episode saw our Fab Four arrive in Atlanta at Brinkston University where Simone's aunt is a professor and they are there for homecoming. It was Jordan's idea to have them get away after Simone mentioned last episode that the, her aunt had invited her down to come and check it out and to get away and they took them up on the offer. Also tagging along is Spolivia and child when I tell you Spolivia understood the assignment initially I thought that they were just there to really just help support the launching of this show and that we weren't going to get any real Spolivia content. But they kind of did all of that and more. We got a little bit of Spolivia content, which was more than enough because it was more than what we expected. And then they also really helped ground us in the story that they're building with All American Homecoming with Spencer getting invested and having a conversation with Damon, with Simone's run ins with Damon, with Jordan's run ins with Damon, with Keisha being after Spencer. Like, we're going to talk about all of that and more. I actually have a few video ideas specifically from this episode because I feel like they gave us so much information. This, honestly, y'all, this pilot was way more than I expected. Like, and I expected a lot. I thought, like, I was like, okay, they got to set this world up. They got to introduce these characters. They got to get us interested. They got to get us almost really loving everything and everyone so that we can, you know, really buy into it. All American, the original, has a really, really huge, strong, loyal fan base. And when it was first announced, everyone was not really on board with the spinoff and not really on board with Simone uh, leading the spinoff. Now, all they had to tell me from the jump was that it was going to be at an HBCU and I was with it. I didn't care which character. I mean, I love Simone as a character just in general. I love the growth that she has experienced throughout the series. I love the story that they have told with her, even coming from like where her and Jordan started to where they are now. I absolutely love all of that about, about her. So to me, it made sense from the start like Simone leading this it made sense and if you haven't checked those videos out you can go back and look on my channel I did videos about All American Homecoming when they first announced it when they were giving us a little bit of information about it when they were filming all of that stuff and you can listen to all of the things that I said before I've 100% been on board but so many in the All American community were not and I felt like they just had a very very high bar to meet when it came to this pilot because not only did they have to set up this new world but they almost had to get everyone who was currently on board with the all-american ship to decide that they were going to commit as well to this new all-american ship and that's just a lot to do in one episode but child when i tell you they did it they did it they understood the assignment and they did it okay like I said, I hope you grab the snack. I hope you grab something to drink because this is going to be a longer one and I'm not even going to apologize for it because I want to talk about everything. I absolutely love from minute one in this episode all the way to the very end. I loved everything about this episode and we're going to talk about each and every detail. So we open up meeting Auntie Amara in class and one of her students shortly after, Keisha, who's also in class. And we get a swift taste of college life, specifically the academics, as we walk in on a conversation about journalistic integrity and the use or non-use amongst journalists of different races. And that's pretty much the only little tidbit of class that we get. I really just enjoyed how they were able to sprinkle little bits of the HBCU experience throughout this whole episode so I don't think every episode in the season will be like this like some episodes might be really class heavy some episodes might be really you know sports heavy like we'll go in and out but with this pilot episode they did a really great job of giving us like a buffet of all of what we are going to see and then really setting it up so that y'all could really understand yeah, so if I was to say what's the best thing about the episode, I think the episode did a fantastic job of just giving you a taste of the HBCU experience as we move from the classrooms to walk in the yard to giving us a party, a fashion show, and performance, student athletes practicing, and a little drama. Literally, I was watching my college experience at Xavier University in New Orleans or my graduate school experience at Morgan State University in Baltimore. 
it was playing out right in front of me, minus the student athlete academics fraud, of course. But everything else, y'all, it was given. It was given what needed to be gave. So Olivia sticks to her, Spencer and I are just friends thing. And Keisha expressed interest in the sexy chocolate that's walking behind them. And shout out to this. I'm so glad that they did it this way because not only did we get a push in reference to Spolivia, but I also think we got a lesson learned with Olivia. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more once I get further into the episode. But we see what y'all doing right. Is y'all better plant seeds and go ahead and make it pay off episodes down the line. We see you. We meet Damon Sims, also known as Simone's spinoff leading man, in a very awkward run-in after he snatches Simone's phone from her, worried that she is filming him at the school. Newsflash, Damon, she, as a matter of fact, we don't know who you are and do not care. You and this little puffy vest can keep it moving, sir. Ugh. Like, all right, y'all. Let's just get this out the way right now. Yes, Damon is fine. Yes, Damon is tall. Yes, Damon has a certain level of charm because he's also an a-hole. Like, I feel like he's literally Jordan, but from a troubled past. And, and see, now that I even articulated that, because I didn't even tweet that last night, but now that I've even articulated that, I'm getting even more annoyed because clearly that's her type. God damn it. <sighs> anyway, Damon was the one character that I was very conflicted with throughout the episode because I spent moments hating him, as I should, Team Jermone, where, for life, period, poo, that's on everything, on every little lamb that Mary had. I said what I said, but then also he has such a great backstory. He comes, oh, his home, like, you know, we love a little, we love a little trouble backstory. We love a little some extra. We love a little razzle dazzle in the history. We love a little coming from nothing story. We love a little, all I want to do is make it and just be a kid. Clearly, I'm still very, very conflicted on Damon Sims. But at this moment, what we're talking about, let me try to go through the episode in order, y'all. I'm going to try my best. I'm still hype. At this moment that we meet him, he is an a-hole. Sir, ain't nobody taking your picture. Don't nobody want your picture. Don't nobody even know who you are. Like, it's baseball. I mean, y'all make hella money in MLB, but it's still baseball. Most of us don't know you when we see you on the street. Relax. And with this brush in with Simone on the yard while she's trying to record uh, Olivia living her best life, doing the Cupid Shuffle or the Wobble, whatever they was doing over there, because y'all know we be line dancing. We get ushered into Damon's story right after that moment because then we get to see him on the field. I, the timing, the pacing, everything about this episode was just on point, child. I don't really know about Homeboy. The little baseball player friend of his, he's, he's giving mad shifty, he's giving mad shady, he's giving your friend really ain't your friend, watch your back. But in this moment, um, when they're standing on the bleachers right before Damon is spotted and gets called onto the field to actually practice with them or show them what he has, we get a moment where we can see their connection, we can see, you know, how they met each other. Let me look up this boy's name because I can't remember to save my life. Jesse, J.R. Raymond. That's the boy that is his friend, Jesse. Okay, I got to do better. I got to do better with these character names. But in all honesty, y'all, it was very hard to keep up with the new characters aside from Keisha. The only reason why I really feel like I remember Keisha's name is because she kept applying pressure to Spencer and pushed Liv to step up and claim was hers. And I remember Thea, but not really. Like, I really remember her catty ways and not really her name. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more from this series and getting to know these characters. Uh, so that I can really settle on who I like, who I don't, who I could care less about, or just very, very indifferent. I'm going to do a whole video breaking down the homecoming characters that we saw in episode one and what you can expect from them. I'm going to put a little bit of predictions in there and then talk about what we actually saw in this episode. So if you're not already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss it when that video goes up. When I tell y'all I got new hotness coming... I got new hotness coming. Like, don't be one of the ones who don't subscribe and just be lurking. Just go ahead and subscribe. It's fine. Join the tribe. You are welcome here. It is all love. This is a safe space. But yes, on the bleachers, we get a little bit between Jesse and Damon. And honestly, there was so much other stuff going on, so I really couldn't get into Jesse's character like that. However, 
I do see that there's some really great seeds planted there because he seems like maybe if we mix Asher, Jordan, and Chris together, that's what would that's what Jesse would be because you can tell that he got some snake stuff to him, but you also can tell that he got a good heart, and you could tell that he don't want to live a snake life. But he going to live his snake life because he doesn't know how to handle his emotions or his jealousy or whatever. It sucks because in most cases, like, you would just hope, like, if you really can't handle, you know, being in somebody's shadow or you feel jealous of somebody, then the best thing for you to do is to remove yourself from that person's presence. But Jesse clings to this friendship with Damon, knowing how he feels, knowing how he feels overshadowed, knowing just how negative he feels about being in this boy's presence so honestly he's choosing violence against himself and that he invited damon down to the school he made a comment in this episode about him not realizing that damon was actually going to commit to the school so i guess that he invited damon to the school and thought like yeah it'll be no chance that he'll come here and steal my shine and then what he do he came here and stole your shine but that just brings me back to like you probably should not be friends and i'm using my air quotes you probably should not be friends with somebody who you really want to be and that goes back to like a little cliche quote that be going around the internet but i wholeheartedly believe you cannot be friends with somebody who secretly wants to be you that's not how this works and i actually have hinted to this in other videos when i have talked about olivia and layla their problem a lot of the time is that they wanted so much of each other like aside from other things aside from layla was a trash friend and start for for sure i definitely feel like a lot of their conflict came from them wanting to be each other in moments like olivia wanting to be as confident and poised and commanding as layla and layla wanting to be surrounded by family and loved and quirky and endearing as olivia like that definitely presented problems like if you can't exist in a space with your friend and honor their differences honor what makes them special honor and celebrate you know the aura that is them without wanting to freaking encapsulate that for yourself then you can't be friends and jesse and zayman i don't think y'all could be friends i'm sorry i'm not sorry i really ain't but y'all can't be friends but we finna watch them try <sighs> fix it jesus all right, we're moving on. Damon gets his behind on that field. It shows, you know, why they trying to pay him all the big bucks. Why his mama is tripping. You know what? Let me go ahead and talk about his mama real quick. Because I'm going to get this out the way. Nadine Ellis, I love you, boo. Always have. Think you're a phenomenal actress. Love all your performances. I really, really do. But you was trying it. Okay? Damon's mama is trying it. And I am, I am so, <laughs> I am up to my wits end with these raggedy parents with the best intentions your intentions don't mean nothing if your impact is trash sis you can intend to see your your son have a better life you can intend to see your son in the mlb you can intend to see your son famous and adored by all but if the impact is that he is just basically a racehorse or a slave or your meal ticket to the good life then your intentions mean squat sis your intentions mean diddly and i'm gonna need you to realize that sooner rather than later because i'm not about to watch 16 to 22 episodes episodes of you trying to ruin this young man's life let alone his hbcu college experience because he is tall he is fun and he is talented and he deserves the next four years that's going to be lit okay and you coming in here with this debbie downer mentality with this focus on the future yes i get it y'all ambition is great i have been a person who has been driven by ambition and achieving and goals and yada 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 i get it I still have plenty of goals, like literally a good amount of them. However, I also understand that now, having experienced a bunch of things, I wish I would have dropped down a little bit more and experienced things harder. I wish I wasn't so focused on looking to the future that I wasn't in the moment that I was in because I've had a lot of beautiful moments. I've had a lot of beautiful life experiences. Like I've gone to two amazing HBCUs. And honestly, y'all, my first two years in New Orleans, sis had blinders on. Sis was going to class, sis was going to practice. Sis wasn't doing much of nothing. Sis was trying to make situationship relationship work from back home and was focused. She was not turning up. She was not doing any of the things to just experience and be it really wasn't until my junior year at Xavier that I actually started to go out 
experience the city even try more food like just doing all of the things we rob ourselves of so many beautiful moments experiences and memories when we are so focused on the future that we cannot be present in the present and i honestly believe that that's what damon was searching for like he showed up at this homecoming and the conversation throughout the episode was he couldn't figure out why he was there one he's searching for the connection to his parents which is also going to be t y'all you know i got some videos coming because we got to talk about his parents and this whole mystery but he was also seeking presence he was also seeking a moment to be able to check out of this this future focused lifestyle that he lives because it's very hard to maintain it is very hard to live a life in the future in the present and that's speaking from experience so i'm gonna need mama to come to jesus to come to jesus quick because at this point i'm headed to atl and y'all know y'all know his mama gonna move to atl because they are from chicago you know she gonna move now that he committed you know she gonna move and be all there just causing prop look okay writers i really love y'all but i really can't do no more raggedy parents <laughs> i can't we could do raggedy professors but no raggedy parents in this series because <sighs> between the bakers and the hicks and the coops mama and well her daddy ain't that bad but her, the coop mamas erica is worn out erica has had it erica's had enough okay and i think my all-american fan counterparts will agree with me y'all drop down in the comment section down below and tell me if you agree with me we want no more raggedy parents hashtag no more raggedy parents back to the regularly scheduled program because clearly that was a rant i really enjoyed the moment where we see these like the head-to-head -head between simone and thea and damon and him working out with the the baseball team I think that this sequence was truly chef's kiss, how they cut back and forth between Simone and Damon and Simone and Damon. It was so perfectly timed and told us everything that we needed to know about both of them in their respective sports and how they will fare with the Brixton University teams. Woo! That sequence got me excited. And I know like this season, y'all have been complaining about not having enough football in All-American, but I definitely think we're going to get plenty of collegiate baseball and tennis in this series i can already tell it's just it's just given that's the vibes is given and honestly y'all i know nk did an interview about why she picked these sports but i also think that she picked these sports because they are spring sports tennis is a spring competition sport and baseball is a spring competition sport football is a fall sport and the way it's looking y'all because we're going to get all american homecoming in probably in january 2022 and i think that the way they're going to try to do it is once all american goes off or goes on break we're going to get all american homecoming and then once all american homecoming goes on break all american will come back and they're going to occupy the same monday night time slot and just be rotating right so they needed to have sports that were not in line in the same season so that they could be able to keep the timeline going because we also i have seen in interviews that nk is speaking about having a good amount of crossover as much crossover as she could possibly do between the shows so i definitely think that we pick they pick spring sports for that reason to be very strategic in reference to timing and availability and to keep the world going because it's going to be happening at the same time does that make sense let me know in the comment section if that makes sense and if you agree child there should be multiple comments from y'all in this video y'all getting a very long video from me where i'm diving deep going very deep into all of what's going on so i want to see multiple comments and i know that you've already subscribed i know you already subscribed but i'm just going to for the people who are just sitting in the back and they didn't hear me the first time go ahead and hit that subscribe button join the tribe it's your girl erica vein i post new all american videos every day sometimes twice a day heck i might give y'all a three video day coming up because i got so many ideas just from this episode it was just so lit so go ahead and hit subscribe so that you do not miss a video i've been doing premieres with my videos which means i'm watching them live with you and talking with y'all as the video premieres which is even better and you only gonna know about that if you subscribe it's gonna tell you right when i'm gonna post the video go ahead and hit that subscribe button and while you at it be sure to follow me on twitter instagram tiktok your girl's coming in hot with more content on other platforms i have been enjoying interacting with y'all on instagram and in twitter while the show is premiering while i'm watching i'm always on twitter and actually tweeting talking about the show i pop in and out of instagram and answering dms and commenting on different posts and replying to y'all's comments so go ahead and follow at ericaving.com on those platforms as, as well whichever is your favorite go ahead and follow me so we can stay connected out here in these digital streets okay
back to the video so we get the core group or the core cast of all american homecoming in this episode shout out to Corey hardrick playing marcus turner assistant turned head coach of the baseball team he is the hard ass baseball coach who understands what it is to be a baseball player understands what it is to have you know professional dreams professional ambitions but it's also very very grounded he's grounded as a person in integrity he has a high moral code which we see play out in this episode and he's very very invested in the types of young men that not only this university produces but their baseball team produces and when he runs in to Damon Child. It just seems like a match made in heaven for me. We love a little troubled kid, a little confused kid that just needs a little bit of guidance and then they bump up against a dang on lighthouse. We love it. We love it when a lost ship runs into a lighthouse and that's exactly what Marcus is going to be for Damon. I definitely have theories in reference to how he ties into Damon figuring out who his parents are and all of that kind of stuff. But at its core, from what we see in this episode, y'all, Marcus is going to be a godsend to Damon because his mama ain't it and I think that Marcus is going to be the model guy that Damon ultimately wants to model himself after and grow to be and again shout out to Corey Hardrick dude got range like Corey be out here acting here and we're about to get him in this very polished poised powerful role really standing up for black men and building black men and I cannot wait to see it yo NK is putting all the bomb stories on TV that we don't have can we take a moment for NK NK we love you forever and ever what Cardi say forever and y'all let me get to the let me get to the good part because I had no idea when looking at those previews I was like how in the world did Olivia and Simone end up in lingerie on stage like what part of the homecoming experience is that what part of the college visit is that because I had never I had visited a many a college and I had never been thrown into some lingerie and drop pop lock and dropping it like it was hot but it totally makes sense they were actually Keisha as well as Amara were in charge of a fashion show they had an emergency one of the girls I don't know sis had the measles mumps whatever she had going on it was not working and because they have their little not their little honey because let me let me get it let me get it correct because they both Simone and Olivia have dance experience Amara's like bet y'all both can do it symmetry let's go and do it they shall do what they did i hate to continue to be cliche but olivia and simone understood the dance assignment and they they understood the seduction assignment they understood the serve it up assignment and they gave what was supposed to be gave okay i don't need my money back it was given exactly actually it was given exponentially more than what it was supposed to gave and i am greatly appreciative when i tell you olivia has spencer mesmerized well simone actually had damon mesmerized as well y'all wrong for that why didn't we see Jordan more mesmerized like Jordan was drooling as well but y'all keep cutting the Damon and how he's all into sir we are married mind your business look the other way like just we are happily married like cut it anyway <laughs> I think that the dance scene was probably my favorite scene of the entire episode even though it wasn't like the most character driven or character revealing I think it just it just was bomb it not only gave a fun breakup and beautiful visuals for the actual show and gave you a little bit more of like, oh, this is what the college vibe is going to be like. Like, this is cool. Like, that's so true. Like, I actually was in a fashion show. We didn't have no damn dance performances and all that. But I was in a fashion show in, at Xavier University. And I remember, like, we just used to put together stuff. HBCUs are just different, y'all. It's, it's just really different. They just got the whole vibe right. Let me just go ahead and say that because it's not even about me and talking about my damn glory years. But... They they got the vibe right it provided a bomb visual it gave us a little bit in references for olivia and we can see like spencer ain't gone away like i have been saying i know that some of y'all was in the comment section like well layla thought the same thing spencer is not going anywhere he was not going anywhere he definitely has been sitting here you know holding strong for olivia and you could tell just by how he was looking at her you could also tell how invested jordan is in simone even though they only gave him like literally half of a second and then gave damon all of like 15 you just saw a lot in this scene while it also being very very fun and the vibe was lit so i really enjoyed this scene the subsequent uh damon trying to help simone and then apologize half apologize and afterwards not so much sir we are married. Leave us alone. Stop smiling at us. <laughs> like, I can't. 
Dude is charming. Like, I get it. Like, I'm so annoyed because NK, y'all are setting up beautifully for this, the fall of Jamon, but I really don't want to see it happen, but it's coming. And I don't even want to claim it. Yeah, so I'm not even going to repeat that anymore. But I could, y'all are definitely... Y'all are laying landmines, for sure. Damon is a big-ass landmine, just ready to blow everything up. Everything from his dang on swag, to his smile, to his... I don't even know how to apologize because I've been moving through life only concerned with myself and you just check me and I think that that's hot but I don't even know how to tell you that I think that it's hot and then your boyfriend has already checked me and then he just rolled up on me let me just go ahead and shut up all of that is just like we get it we really really get it but no we don't want it can she have this like later just just a lot later we don't we want Jermaine we get the moment where Damon recognizes Spencer after we already saw earlier that Spencer recognized Damon so there's a little bit of, of respect there and I think that this moment was definitely foreshadowing for when they actually have a conversation later on in the episode which I thought was great I definitely thought we was going to get more from Jordan in the, on the jealousy tip but again the, the episode is or the show isn't necessarily about Jordan. So we got a little bit of tidbits here. Jordan, you know, pop up. She said what she said. Is there a problem here? You know, doing what Jordan has to do. Uh, one thing I'm going to always give Jordan, always going to love about Jordan, is that he's always with the ish. Jordan Baker is always with the ish, and he's going to fight for his. And if he's already swung on Spencer this season, he have no problem swinging on Damon. Like, I was actually expecting him to swing on Damon at some point in this episode. But, you know, maybe therapy is helping. I think a lovely little backstory that was happening throughout this episode, too, was watching Simone and Olivia fall in love with the HBCU experience. Simone was very much so focused on the Ivy League colleges of her choice. So to see her actually get here and be immersed in the culture be immersed in the environment and absolutely fall in love with it it almost felt like you discovering different parts of yourself and then falling deeper in love with yourself it was just really beautiful to watch now i talked about this in the synopsis breakdown when we got that but the big story that auntie amara came up with was that the head coach of the baseball team had been faking classes with one of the dang on professors just so that they could keep their baseball players eligible which blows up in this episode it actually comes by way of amara and apparently the tip came from assistant coach marcus turner he's willing to allow the whole team the whole you know infrastructure of the baseball team to get blown Blown up in the sake of protecting these boys and resetting the program if possible so that they can do it from a really uh, honest better place which is super admirable my second favorite scene of this episode is definitely the party scene and y'all were losing it the dang on preview y'all were losing it about spencer dancing with who is this girl and what is going on and look at here shout out to nk and the creatives because they got y'all they really did get, they they got y'all everybody who was pissed about it they got y'all they set you up they gave you the okie doke and i loved every minute of it like yes they were both at a party since and olivia would dance with other people but when the time came olivia staked her flag and now i can talk about it so i am proud of olivia in this moment <laughs> because she saw keisha applying pressure she saw keisha being keisha and she did something about it not necessarily in addressing Keisha but honestly I feel like the same thing played out again from season one when she saw Layla making a connection with Spencer she literally just fell back and let it happen and I think that she learned her lesson and this time she was just like okay no let me go ahead and go for mine and she did so shout out to you Liv shout out to you and I think that the way that they did it it was not contrived it was not overly done like it just felt very very organic so I'm with it like I'm 100% with it and of course I'm going to be coming with the video talking about what this kiss means for Bolivia because y'all we do have two episodes left in season three and the only thing like I'm not going to dampen this video <laughs> with my crazy thoughts about what's happening with Bolivia in the next two episodes but my only concern is that because we got this kiss now what is going to happen or what are the writers going to do later but I'm going to live in this moment I'm going to be present here and I'm going to enjoy Bolivia right now they doing what they needed to do they're connecting they're connecting as teenagers they're having fun they're letting it flow it's not a whole bunch of tension stress or drama around this connection and I think that this is the one of the best ways that they could have done it it just feels right
it honestly feels right right now and it doesn't feel heavy and shout out to y'all because everybody was online talking about how is everybody spotting this tennis bracelet on her wrist like out of nowhere do we got nano vision or what is going on and i thought it was freaking hilarious because thea spots the bracelet on simone's wrist as well as damon spots it on her wrist when he walks up to the party it is so funny because it's like yeah it's the smallest thing ever but everybody like oh you play tennis oh you play tennis like sure i would not have noticed that in my wildest dreams okay before the episode ends we get to see honestly the start to what the series is going to be while the scandal seemingly ends the baseball team damon committed to the school and petitioning for marcus to be the head coach brings the team back and puts it on to a new path amara is talking to simone about applying and simone is really seeming like she's she's vibing with it and she takes a visit to the actual the head coach's office to talk about the tennis opportunities prior to Damon's you know commits to school he has a conversation with Spencer and it really talks about him going for what he wants regardless of what he thinks his mother wants for him and regardless that his mother still want to love him like we really get to see like the last 20 minutes of the episode them setting up this world again I mentioned before Jesse is clearly jealous of Damon and we get that moment between them and then at the very very end of the episode we get to see a moment between Damon and Simone which is definitely the spark that sets off how they're going to interact in the rest of the series like I definitely think when the series comes back we are going to see them be friends like i don't think that they're going to jump into a relationship right away thank god but we're going to see them navigate what their friendship looks like and probably support each other both being new students to the school and student athletes and then having what gone through what they have gone through in this one weekend together is definitely set the foundation for them to move forward and all right y'all that is my full breakdown of episode 17 the all-american spinoff episode if i miss anything let me know in the comment section down below i trust me i have more videos coming about specific things that happen in this episode this is just an overview i'm still going to have my preview video for episode 18 coming tomorrow and shall we going back to Crenshaw with the drama honey and I just want to live in Atlanta for a few more days and get all the good vibes and the good feels this episode just really felt good even with the little drama that it had it really just felt really good it felt light it felt freeing it felt fun it felt like black joy and I'm very very excited about it but next week we're back in Crenshaw dealing with what we need to deal with as we round out the rest of season three of all american again if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button post a comment in the comment section down below give me four tennis racket emojis in your comments so that i know that you watch this whole video like the whole video and i know it's long but i appreciate you and anybody who posted the four tennis rackets in that comment is going to get a comment back from me for sure because I appreciate you taking the time to watch this full video. I appreciate you sharing your comments and connecting with me in this community. And I just love you so very much. And I want to show you some extra special love. If you missed any of my All-American coverage thus far, I got my All About All-American playlist right here so you can catch up. And also, I'm going to give you two other All-American suggestions. So these two videos you should also watch if you haven't seen them. It's your girl, Erica Vane. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.